saying that you know there are unintended consequences of sanction. Even the, the country imposing the sanction might not be thinking about the environmental consequences. So they're not doing it intentionally. But when we react by by building new refineries and which are outdated, which are horrible in terms of you know quality, we create air pollution at home. So Iran has now like four of Iranian cities are among the the top ten most polluted cities in the world. You know, this is the WHO selection. You gotta change the economy, like, you know, and then tax the people who want to, and, and, I mean, crazy things like this, and it takes time till people realize that these are jokes, you cannot really do it, but some people might get, get lucky and, and rich this way. Now they're talking about transferring water to this area, transferring water to the industries in these areas, deselling it and transfer. It's stupid because it's so costly to do that. I mean, you're selling them what? I mean, could sell with that price. They they can they should be irrigated with with orange juice and cheese and I mean it costs you that much. I mean rather you can you can do what? Rather than that, you can do. Convention is the famous convention of wetlands and um, guess where it was signed in Ramsar in when long ago, decades ago, and a country which you know whose name is associated with the Ramsar Convention, country which committed protect the, the, the wetlands early on, we're talking about decades ago, uh, and, and it got some attention, I don't know if, if it helped, but, but again, it's the similar problem that we're dealing with. The river channelization in the United States, that's also mismanagement. That, that you know, you, I'm concerned about one part of the problem, and that is, okay, make my river shorter, make it navigable, make sure that I can make money off of this, put people behind the levees and you get floods. Right? And you realize it's not good for your environment, but we act in mean, uh, streets and, and, and locations, but it doesn't work. Uh, so this was a big problem. And now, if, if you follow us, what happened with us? I'm, I'm this, you know, I belong to this generation, was born in 1981, started with the dry milk crisis. So there was no enough milk for us, and, and people had to stand in lines together. And then everything laid on. But again, this is one aspect of the problem. I mean, we need workforce, but if we do it in the same way, and all these people are going to go to Tehran and you know, and the, the other major cities, we will have resource problems. So this can be a crazy thing to do. So um, distribution, I would say, is more and land use planning is more important than about one third. I mean, only 15 percent of the area is under cultivation in the, in the country, and that still creates 23 percent of the jobs and most like one third of the population rely on this sector. But, how many of you would be proud to say that your parents were farmers? I mean, I'm not saying that you know, cities and do service even, like, you know, get into the service industry and don't, don't farm. So what we have right now is like the average age of 50 to 60 a year old for farmers, they don't really want to learn, they, they're risk averse, they don't want to change the way they have been doing things. We have produced a lot of agriculture engineers who don't, you know, is quite different. What we're getting from rain-fed agriculture is, is quite low. And that's because because of the employment, of course. But I mean, that's also an area to invest in. And and when you have an inefficient agriculture, it, it take I mean that takes a lot of water from you. So the irrigation efficiency we're talking about 30, 30 of your country. So the developed world, for the most part, has this reverse, right? So we export industry and buy food, and you get more dollars per per drop of water. And that's how you create security. You don't think about food security and separate it from the rest of the things. As long as you're in a good understanding of the future and a comprehensive understanding of the system, the complexities that you're dealing with, the coupled human natural system that you're dealing with. And when, when that happens, you make this what like you make decisions which which are going to improve one part of the system, but creates a lot of problems for the rest of the system. The RLC syndrome hitting Lake Rumia has been all over the place. Uh, we have done we, we have done a study uh, through like Landsat images of the NASA on, on the lake to to prove that the, the source of the problem is not climatic. I and mean, you know, so ten of us from different countries, uh, ten Iranians outside Iran, in terms of destructing. The, the wetlands. So, so extensive water transfer. Through water transfers, the natural flow of the, they have doubled the flow, natural flow of this. Right now is happening that they are stopping all, all new dam constructions. They don't want to build any other dam because it's just a huge thing in a country. They have lost a lot of historic sites. 
I mean, drooling the history of the country is not a sweet thing to do. And a lot of other things. And now the new trend is water transfer. You hear it all over the place, people want to transfer. Some people you know, have, you know, have proposed connecting the two. It's called Iran Route, Iran River, their neighbor.